Welcome back everyone. So glad to see you dropping in. Today we're gonna be messing around creating this kind of like thermal procedural kind of thing. And it should be pretty simple, honestly. You'll learn some key skills in terms of just like making some procedural like background effects that could be kind of trippy, kind of wavy. But anyways, without ado, let's just hop right on in. Okay, everyone, as we go right on in, <coughs> we're gonna go ahead and delete all of our default objects per usual. We're gonna go ahead and in the scene settings on the right hand corner, turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections. Then what we're gonna do around the edit tab, open up preferences to get your animation looping properly. Make sure your default interpolation is set to linear. Okay. Once you have all that set, we're going to bring in a plane. Press Shift A. Uh, plane. I personally like to scale it up to about four. It doesn't have to be too big. This is all your choice. Uh, keep in mind, the bigger it is, the larger the values we got to do down the road. So then let's press Shift A once again. And we're viewing by holding down tilde and top. Press. Uh, grab it, press Z. Let's just take a quick view into the camera. We want to make sure that split the workspace by right clicking the bottom. We just want to make sure we have an okay amount of space. Right about there is okay. Cool. Once we have our camera kind of set up, you're going to go ahead and thin the camera actually. In the viewport display, turn on the passive power. This way we only see what we need to see and we don't see all the extra stuff. Okay. Then your plane, press tab now. Still doing some modeling here. Press right click, subdivide it. I subdivided mine about four, let's do it. I'm gonna do about five times because I'm gonna push my computer here. Okay. Once you have that set up on your plane, I'm gonna go ahead and just rename mine and call it displacement object okay I'm gonna add the modifier displace click new open up that pressing pill switch it into clouds and you're gonna see it's gonna get a bit ugly but chill out, chill out with me we're gonna make it okay what I did was you want to go ahead and turn up the size a little bit. You don't really have to mess with depth. Limit my size about one. And I made my contrast a little bit higher. You can just play with brightness. You don't have to be too bright. So I have to kind of subtly just kind of pop out. And you'll see because we're going to be animating it. It looks like now with our camera, I might have to bring it in a little bit. Or you can make your plane a little bit bigger, one or the other, whatever works for you. Make contrast about five, or three, two. Let's leave these values as is for right now, but let's get to animating. Okay. So this is a very important step. So if those eaves perk up right about now, right now is a great time. So press Shift A. We're going to go ahead and bring in a curve circle. And what you're going to do is you're going to press R, I believe, X, 90 degrees. Cool. And then on R, Y, or no, R, Z, 90 degrees. Press N, you can kind of see the X values are 90 degrees, Z, 90 degrees. Bring in an empty. Plane axis. I'm gonna call this displacement controller. Okay. And then within your displacement controller, you're gonna go down to object constraints. You're gonna to want to make that follow path and make that target the Bezier circle, right? And you can see as you increase the offset, it loops. Cool. Now I'm gonna do a slight bit of animating. So, go to keyframe zero. Insert a keyframe on the offset. 
go to the last frame and press shift. I hold down shift and right arrow to go to my last frame. Insert the value 100. Keeps it simple. Okay. Go back to your displacement object. Go to your modifiers. Within your displace modifier, switch the coordinates to object to do displacement controller. And now what you'll see is as it animates, you can kind of see we got some stuff going on here. So here's where you do a bit more fine tuning on just like the whole animation because right now it's like a little bit, it's like a bit scruffy. You want it to be kind of smooth. We want it to have a little bit of that. Press right click, shade it smoothly. So now it looks a little bit, a little bit nicer. If you're wondering, well, it's like, oh my god, it looks too pixely. I don't want that. That's a fix for you. It looks okay. I like 0.5. It's nice to see it from an angle too. One point five contrast. Let's give it some solid numbers. I think this is okay for now for what we're trying to do. Okay. Once you have the animation kind of rolling, let's go ahead and just split split our workspace one more time. Go to shader editor. Now what we're gonna do here is we're simply gonna create a new shader on your displacement object. Here's where things are gonna get a little more fun here. Then your shader view, you're gonna enter a, a mix shader. And let's just go ahead and do material preview just so we can kind of see what's going on. Um, then what you're gonna do is enter a layer weight, make the facing connect with the facing of the mix shader. What that does is it gives our um, with the amount of height we have within like the topology here, the parts that are going up are going to have a bit more color to it. And then we're going to bring in an emission. Here's where it gets a lot more fun to emission. Let's make it like blue. Uh, that's three. You can see, you're kind of seeing a bit of like the topology and whatnot. Uh, what we're going to go ahead and do now, let's go ahead and start looking at our rendered view because we're playing with emissions. Uh, so when you're looking at your rendered, go ahead and set your background for your world to strength to zero. Make sure, double click, that you have all this triggered. And let's go ahead and start playing around with this. So I personally brought my metallic up a little bit, turn my roughness down. And what I did, make things a little more fun. Enter the color ramp. Connect your color ramp to your mission. Now it's like, what the fuck is going on, my guy? And go ahead and also bring in a gradient texture. Connect that to the factor. Uh, or make it like easing or something. It's fine for now. Now we're going to bring in some colors. So what I did, I'm just going to quickly show you. So I looked up thermal camera image, right? I was looking at the colors, right? So we have like this bright red, this green, and like a light blue. I'm just going to go ahead and bring in it like this. Got this bright red. Screen. Oops. Green. It's blue. I think that's okay. As long as you have it set on easing, you see when you have other kind of effects, it changes up a bit. And easing kind of just makes the color match. Okay, my friend. And it's not up that too much. What I also like to do is go into my color management, switch to a bit of contrast you can play with layer weight now you can kind of see as you bring it down 
I think the blend of layer weight too high just all becomes a whole different effect actually <laughs> just kind of cool but we're gonna pull eyes down just a tad bit all right and what I also did to make it a little more interesting shout out to them motion is bring in a bump node connected to your normal and then you can bring in something like a magic texture and connect that to your height you can see it gets a bit weirder or better yet bring in a musgrave connect to the height Okay, switch to 40 is what's going to get fun. And what you could do with the 40 is you get this W value, right? This W value essentially changes up the seed. You can keyframe that and you can make it pretty much a loop. So what you would do is set W0, set to 2. Might be a little too fast, in my opinion. No pun intended. <laughs> and then when you click play, you can see we have a little more effects going on. Might be a little too fast for my my own taste. Let's just go back into the middle. I think it's just one. Keep things slow here. Okay. So that's like our base kind of effect. What I did to bring it up a few notches now. Go into the compositing, use nodes. This is my favorite. If you've been here before, you're like, you already know what's, you already know the deal. Bring in a viewer, connect. Go ahead and go to your render settings. Just make sure everything's set up properly. FF MPEG, encoding MP4. Right, it's actually lossless. Make sure you give give what you're working on at home. Okay, uh, I'm gonna do one last thing to my my work. So go to your displacement object. And if your computer is a bit strong, you can push it. If your computer is already having issues, I suggest not doing this. Let's go ahead and bring in a subdivision. And what that subdivision will do is we'll just make it a little more gooey. And once you can do that worked out for you, I suggest diving right back into the layer weight to get a view of what is happening. What is happening? Okay. Now zero point four is okay. Now turn back over to compositing, and let's go ahead and bring in a lens distortion. Keep things trippy over here. Let's just quickly render the image. It's like, oh, what the fuck is going on, my guy? I like to give it a bit of jitter. It gives that like that noise kind of value. Bring in a mix node. Here, you could play with difference, in my opinion. Difference can play well with certain colors. You can definitely get a bit more of like a thermal, an enhanced thermal effect if you bring in like a green, if you played with the colors I played with. And we're just gonna, let's play with that for right now because I don't want this to be too crazy. So, Let's go ahead and run this and let's check right back in. All right, so you did it. Great job. Give yourself a nice little pat on the back. Um, you made a bit of procedural kind of thermal customizable thing that you can use as 
cool little backdrop, uh, projector, just catch the vibes, a little 10 second loop. Um, but per usual, thank you once again for helping me out. I'm a bit of a, I like to call it, consider myself a small YouTuber, just like paving his little own way uh, within here. I'm glad to create more tutorials and just things that people find useful. So I'm always open for critique. And also if you have any suggestions or things like you would love me to dive a little bit more into, you would like me to show a little more of certain sections, how we play around with certain things and um, let me know. So thanks once again, and I'll catch you around.